unbalanced forces. That is the topic for this week. Hmm, how can I put them in simple terms? Well, let me put it this way. What do you all think will happen if, let's say, Mr. Martinez fights the Hulk? You know, the, the Incredible Hulk, you know, the guy from the comics and stuff? Well, I know what you all think, in that Mr. Martinez is gonna beat him down, right? Uh, with one hand, in, in a couple of seconds, and he's gonna sweep the floor with him, yes, but uh, I agree with you, yeah, I actually agree with you for this time. But, um, well, we are gonna be talking about unbalanced forces, and believe it or not, this is related to it. So, I'm gonna be putting a video with the notes that you're supposed to finish. So, let's get to it. So, just for a starter, this is page 100, where you have your ticks. The ticks is 8.6, letter A, where we are supposed to calculate how unbalanced forces can change the speed and direction of objects that have motion, all right? And then if we go to the next page, we can see this too. Remember to pause the video if you still need to um, write anything, all right? I know I give you time during class so you can copy this down, but just for any reason somebody saps in or you didn't have time to finish, then you can just pause the video and look at it, all right? Let's take a look at this top one. What is a force? What are the units to measure for? The SI units are the international standards, like the metric system. And let us see what lab equipment is used to measure force. So let's take a look at letter A first, okay? A force is a push or a pull that causes an object to move, to stop, or to change direction. For letter B, the SI units of measurements to measure force is Newtons. And the last one, letter C, is the equipment that we use to measure force is called the spring scale. And that is what the spring scale look like, right? And let's move on to the next ones. Two characteristics of a force, letter A. Well, I put this on the top of your foldable because it's a big um, answer. So the two characteristics of forces are magnitude and direction. And the magnitude actually tells you how much force is used, right? It's measured in Newtons. For direction, you have uh, two different options. If you see that there is a compass in one of your questions, then that's the type of directions you have to use in your answers. Like for example, it can be north, south, east, and west. This is the direction in which the force is being applied. It can also be northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest. Or if you don't have any compass, then you can just say left, right, up, and down. Or you can indicate direction with arrows. All right? For letter B is, how can you represent the magnitude and direction of forces? Well, magnitude and direction is represented with arrows, right? The bigger the arrow, the bigger the force. The smaller the arrow, the smaller the force. And you can relate those numbers. This is 5,000 Newtons. This is 2,000 Newtons. And this one is going to the right. This one is going to the left. And this one, you can see, it's kind of like in between the size of it. So the amount of Newtons is also in between the 5,000 and the 2,000. And it's going to the right. Right, those are just examples how you represent magnitude and direction of a force using arrows. On this page, this is page 102, we're supposed to talk about balance forces. What is a balance force and what are some characteristics of balance forces? Well, let's take a look at what a balance force is. Okay, a balance force are forces that cancel each other out because, because of two things. The forces are gonna be equal in size, but they are gonna be opposite in direction. And that is an example how is the same amount of force, but they're going in opposite directions, they are gonna cancel each other out. That thing or that box is not gonna move. This is an example of two boys playing tug of war where one boy has an evil face that, oh, I'm gonna beat him, right? But he doesn't. Both of them are pulling, 
with the same amount of force, 40 newtons, one to the right, one to the left, neither of them is going to win. Of course, Martinez steps in and he'll win, right? But that's a different story. Characteristics of balance forces. These are some of the characteristics. They don't cause a change in motion of objects. Objects do not move. The net force is zero, and the forces are going to cancel each other. Okay? Why? Because the forces are equal in magnitude, the same amount of force, and opposite in direction. For the next one, unbalanced forces. Now we're talking about unbalanced forces. So what are unbalanced forces? And what are some of the characteristics? Well, unbalanced forces, what are they? These are forces that move or can change the motion of objects. If you apply an unbalanced force, these are the things that can happen. Characteristics. The characteristics are these ones below. Okay? I should be putting letter B over here. I forgot. Just make sure you know that is letter B characteristics of unbalanced forces, right? They change the motion of objects. Look at these two examples, or this example. This is one example, I'm sorry. Notice this force, 25 newtons versus 5 newtons. We know that 25 newtons is going to win. And that will be the net force. It will be 20 newtons. You solve that problem by subtracting, since they're going in opposite direction. One force is always greater than the other. That's another characteristic. That one is greater, right? So that's one of the characteristics. They cause objects to start moving, to speed up, to slow down, or to change in direction. The net force will never be zero. There's always going to be a net force. Look at this one. That one is the net force after the subtraction. That is not zero. It's 20. So that's the one thing or the one category that you can think about. The net force is never going to be zero. It should always be bigger than zero. And at the end, we have page 103. Letter A, what are net forces? What are the net forces? Is what you have left over after you add or subtract all the forces that are being used. Letter B, when do you add the forces? Well, you're supposed to add the forces when the forces that are being used are going on the same direction. Look at these two forces. You got 25 newtons and 10 newtons. Both of them are pushing this object in this direction. So you're going to have a total of, of 35 newtons going to the right. Letter C, when do you subtract the forces? Well, you're supposed to subtract the forces when the forces that are applied are going on opposite directions. Okay? So this is an example right here. You can see that both of these forces are going opposite. One is going to the right, one going to the left. This is 150 newtons. This is 25. If you subtract it, we know this force will win the net force will be 125 newtons after the subtraction and obviously the object will move in this direction to the right. This is another example of a tug of war. This time one uh, person or one student is um, applying a bigger force than the other. You subtract, right? They're going in opposite directions. So the net force will be 30. This guy will win. And at the end, we have friction, gravity, and motion. So what is friction? Friction is a type of force, right, that is making or that is going opposite. Uh, but it's also making contact with the other, uh, with a surface. It can be the floor, it can be air, but it has to be making contact. So it's an opposite force that is making contact. Look at this one. This is an object that is moving or it's being pushed with 80 newtons against the floor, right? So the friction of the floor is going to be 10 newtons in opposite direction of this force that has been applied. So therefore, 
the object will move only with 70 newtons of force. You subtract, it's an opposite force. Gravity, so what is gravity? Gravity is a force of attraction between two objects that have mass. This is an example of the sun and the earth going around the sun, right? And the reason why it's trapped in this gravity force is, or force field is because of the amount of mass between the sun and the earth. This is a rock that is falling from the atmosphere, from the, from the top to the bottom, the surface of the earth, right? It's being attracted because of gravity. So those are just two examples. And the last one, what is motion? Motion is movement or a change in position of an object due to an unbalanced force. That is the bell, so time is up. We'll see you guys later. Bye.